Hey guys, it's Hoff Bauer. It's uh, Law of Signs and Cosines week. I am going to do Law of Signs today. I'm hoping that you've all seen this either in Trig or Honors Geometry or Honors Algebra 2 or somewhere, but if not, this is how it goes. First thing is please triple, double, quadruple check that your calculator is not in radian modes, but is in degree mode today. So we're doing degrees right up here. Okay, and make sure it says degrees at the tippy top. All right, and then, all right, the Law of signs is used when we don't have a right triangle, so we can't use Soka Toa stuff, okay? These are called oblique triangles, and the Law of signs is used when you can set up a proportion of any angle, it's the sine of an angle across from the side opposite of it, so it works when we have two angles and a side, so it works when we have Whoops, where's my pen here? Two angles and a side, either of these situations. You will recall that those are both ways that prove triangles congruent from geometry. This one was not a theorem in geometry because it spelled this word. Remember that? Okay, there was no theorem called that. And it works for that situation, but the reason it's tricky is because it does not necessarily determine a unique triangle. That's why we couldn't call it a congruence theorem. And sometimes there's going to be two triangles out of that situation. So we're going to worry about that in a second. Um, I don't think we've done these where we have triangle ABC. Anytime you have a triangle ABC, the lowercase letters are the sides. And the capital letters are the angles. Angle B is across from side B. Angle A is across from side A, and so on. And you can set up law of signs. You don't need all three. You need any two, OK? So you're going to have either the sine of A is across from A as the sine of B is across from B, or maybe A and C. And because you're just cross multiplying, it actually doesn't matter if you want to set it up like this. I always put the sign on the top, but it's okay if you put the lengths on the top and the signs on the bottom. So in this picture, we are trying to solve the triangle. Now, I am not going to ask you ever to solve a triangle on a quiz because everything is dependent on your answers to previous parts, and I don't like doing that. So. Um, we're just going to do a couple here, and then most of the time I'll only ask you for one missing piece not to solve. Solve means find all the pieces. So right now we know angle A is 30 degrees, angle B is 100 degrees. We know a triangle adds up to 180, so that would make angle C 180 minus 100 minus 30 would be 50 degrees. All right, and the one side we know is here. The side A is 15, and we need to find side B and side C. Whoops. All right, so to do that, we're going to set up the ones that are across from each other. The sine of 30 is across from a side of 15. Just make sure you always put the angle degree, the angles with the sign and the sides on the bottom. Now, if we want to find side B first, we would say the sine of 100 degrees is across from side B. And then we're just going to cross multiply and divide. So I'm going to type 15 times the sine of 100. And then I'm going to divide that by the sine of 30 so that I solve for B. 15 times the sine of 100. You have to close your parentheses if you're doing it all in one step. And then divide by the sine of 30. And I got 29.5 for the side B. Now, 
Now to find side C, it's across from this 50 degree angle. So we can say sine of 50 degrees is across from some side C. And I'm going to stick with the one that they gave us and not use this decimal approximation here. I'm going to put the sine of 30 is across from 15. It should work either way, but I hate to use a rounded answer if I don't have to. Okay, so then I'm going to type 15 times the sine of 50 divided by the sine of 30. And I get 22.98, or roughly 23, if I round to the nearest tenth, like it says up here. So I have solved for all the pieces, those that they gave us, and those that we had to find. I think I have one more of those. Nope. Yes? Okay, yes I do. At least one here. So we have 150 and a 20, so that adds up to 170, so that would be 10 to make it 180. So angle B was missing and we found it's 10 degrees. Then I want to set up the ones that are across from each other. Okay, so to find lowercase b here across from angle B, I'd have the sine of 10 degrees is across from B in the same way the sine of now you got a 200 and a 150. Remember the 150 degrees goes on top and the 200 that's a unit of length goes on the bottom. Once in a while I write those wrong and then I get myself in trouble. I'm going to just do it on my calculator here. 200 sine of 10 divided by this sine of 150. I got 69.5 for little b. And then finally, I'm going to do it over again, and I'm going to say C is the side over here that's across from a 20. And again, it's I'm typing 200 times the sine of 20, close parenthesis, divided by the sine of 150. To get C, So I have C is 136.8. So I have side C, side B, and angle B that we're missing to begin with. I'm just going to double check my answers here. Yeah, I, I actually found side B twice instead of finding C on my notes, so I hope I did it right on here. Let's see if it's reasonable. Um, to check for reasonableness, remember the smallest angle should be across from the smallest side in this triangle. And the biggest angle, the 150, should be across from the biggest side. 20 is across from 136.8. Hmm, that seems kind of big, but I'll type it one more time just to make sure. 200 sine of 20 divided by the sine of 150. Yep, yeah, 136.8, okay. Uh, we do have one more of these. Okay, they gave us two angles, so we need to find the third, 180 minus 38 and 63. is 79 degrees. So angle N is 79 degrees. It's one of the things we needed to find. And now we can set up to find side P over here or side M over here. So we have, um, let's see, let's start with the sine 
of 79 is across from 15 in the same way the sine of 63 is across from P. So I typed 15 sine of 63 divided by the sine of 79 because that's what's kitty corner from the P. 15 sine 63 close parenthesis divided by sine of 79 is 13.6. And then to find M here, I would have the sine of 79 is still across from 15, but the sine of 38 is across from M. So I'd have 15 times the sine of 38 divided by the sine of 79. I got 9.4. Now you could double check again that the biggest side is across from the biggest angle and so on. Um, those are the numbers I got when I did my answer key. All right, now we get to the tricky business. The reason that there is no such theorem as this is because when you have a side and another side and an angle that's not attached to either, not in between those sides, it's called two sides and an angle that's not included. And what can happen is that if the two sides aren't long enough with this angle in between, it doesn't make a triangle at all. And we're gonna see that in a minute. It can be that it turns out to make exactly one triangle, which happens very frequently, but it is also possible if you have just the right length that this one inch piece here could land there or it could actually swing over and land in here that one inch piece so it, these two have exactly two inch sides here exactly 30 degrees but one inch side could be there or could go this way and therefore there are two separate triangles that could exist angle a would be 30 in both but angle b and c if we call that c Angle B and C would be different measures depending how the triangle looks. All right, so given the measures of two sides and a non-included angle, it is possible that no triangles exist, exactly one exists, or two exists. Therefore, when you have this situation, it's called the ambiguous case because we don't know how many solutions there are. There is a rule about how to figure that out, but it's super complicated I've never memorized it it's not really complicated it's just a pain in the neck to memorize I just always try it so this is what we're gonna do um, I'm trying to explain this so that it makes a little bit of sense to why there are two solutions if you knew that the sine of an angle is one half or 0 0.5 when you do second sine of 0.5 on your calculator in degrees you type second sine 0.5 okay you get 30 degrees but when if this was 0.5 it would hit here at 30 degrees but it would also hit that line of 0.5 30 degrees back from 180, which would be 150 degrees. So what I'm trying to show you is that the sine of 30 and the sine of 150 are exactly equivalent. And this is true of any angle and its supplement. The sines are equal, okay? The cosines are not. And that's because the cosine is, has a different shape, right? It starts here. So between 0 and 90, which is all an angle can be, uh, sorry, an angle can go up to 180 in a triangle. But when we do cosine, it looks like this. So from 0 to 180, which is right here, if we did pi or 2, because this is 2 pi out to there, between 0 and 180, the cosine can have positive and negative numbers. It doesn't repeat, okay? So if you wanted the 
inverse cosine of 0.5. you'd get 60. But if you wanted its supplement of 120, you would have to do the inverse cosine of negative 0.5. So that's going to take care of itself when you do law of cosines, which we'll learn tomorrow. But the bottom line is the situation is anytime you do inverse sine of an angle, okay, anytime you do this, there's two possibilities. Uh, it's inverse sine, uh, inverse sine of some number, and you're trying to get an angle. There are two possibilities, okay? The one the calculator gives you, or it's supplement 180 minus theta. I'm gonna show you with an example. It says to try to figure this out, you can make a reasonable sketch and try to make your sides proportional. You can always check that the longest angle is opposite the largest, longest side is opposite the largest side, etc. cetera. Um, it says your calculator will never return two possible angle measures because it inverse sine is a function. So you have to know how to find the other possibility. So I'm gonna, do that you don't have this one this is an extra slide but if you had a side so we were given in the information up here i'm not drawing this accurately that a was 43 degrees and across from that was a side that's 25 and some side b is 28 degrees or 28 units long but i'm trying to find this and these angles i really only care about the moment about this angle up here okay call that angle b because this was side b so i'm setting up the sine of some angle is across from a side that's 28 when the sine of 43 is across from a side that's 25. so i cross multiply i do 28 times the sine of 43 and then i divide by 25 and I get the sine of B equals 0.7638. So I type on my calculator second sine 0.7638. And then as soon as I get that answer, second sine 0.7638, I get 49.8 degrees. And then you have to go, or 180 minus that is a possibility. Now a whole bunch of the time, You'll already have an angle that makes it so that this one doesn't work. But on this particular picture, it is possible that angle B in the triangle could be 49.8, or angle B in the triangle right here could be 130.2. Well, the reason you would be eliminating one is if this had come out like 30 and 150, you can't have a 43 and 150 because it makes it bigger than 180. But you can have a 43 and a 130 and there would still be a little tiny angle left up here at C. All right. Um, I think you're gonna find this is a weird example. We have triangle ABC, and I'm not drawing this proportional at all, but side A is 12, side B across from angle B is 8, angle B is 61. We're supposed to solve the triangle. So you would start by finding angle A because it's across from the 12. And 61 is across from a side of 8. Then you would type 12 times the sine of 61. And the 8 is across from here, so you divide by 8, and that would be the sine of A. So 12 sine 61 divided by 8 gives me 1.312. Now somebody already realized why that's not going to work. The sine value can never be more than 1. We've harped on that for a while. 
but you won't maybe notice. So you do inverse sine and then you either bring this number down or you type 1.312 or however you want to do it. And you're going to get this error, okay? When you try to do the inverse sine of a number more than one, it's going to say not possible. And that means this whole triangle is not possible, okay? If I tried to draw this accurately, um, there's a 61 degree angle. Okay, let's call that a 61 degree angle. And coming off of that is a side that's 12 units long. Let's call that 12. And then there's a side attached to that that's eight, which is just over half of this. And do you see no matter how long we make this side, it's never gonna reach? Okay, so that's why it's not possible. But all you need to know is the calculator said it, it had a domain error and then you're done. All right, here's the big painful one for the day. This is what happens when you do get two possibilities. So we have an angle A that's 38 and across from it is a side of eight. You are looking for angle B and it's across from a side that's 10. So you set up the sine of B is across from 10 in the same way the sine of 38 is across from eight. And you type 10 sine of 38, close parenthesis, divided by 8. And that means the sine of B is that decimal, 0.7695. I'm just going to put 77 because I'm going to leave it in my calculator anyway. And then I do that number second sign of that to find the actual angle inverse sign just like you did back in um, Sokotoa stuff when you're trying to find an angle it's always the inverse so you do second sign and I got 50.3 degrees but because I did second sign I have to look at the other possibility so if I do 180 minus that other possibility I get 129.7. Now, what happens is, this was angle B. There are two completely different triangles that are possible. So angle B could be 50.3, or angle B could be 129.7, because adding to a 38 still leaves room for a third angle. In this triangle, you would have 180 minus 50.3 and minus 38. And there'd be left over 91.7 degrees for the third angle. In this triangle, when you do 180 minus 38 and minus 129.7, there's only 12.3 degrees left over for that third angle, but it still works. Again, biggest side across from biggest angle, biggest side across from biggest angle, littlest side is going to be across from littlest angle here. So this answer should be less than 8. This one is a bigger angle, so it should be more than 10. So we're going to set up the sine of 91.7 is across from C in the same way the sine of 38 is across from 8. So 8 times the sine of 91.7 divided by the sine of 38. I forgot to close a parenthesis here, hang on. And I got 12.988 or 13 roughly. So again, the biggest angle is across from the biggest side here. On this one, I have the sine of 12.3 is across from C in the same way the sine of 38 is across from eight. So 8 times the sine of 12.3 divided by the sine of 38 makes C only 2.768, does it say nearest tenth? 
so 2.8, which would indeed make it the smallest side by a lot. Now, I don't know if you remember this, but there's also a theorem that says the sum of any two sides has to be greater than the third in geometry. So a 2.8 and an 8 add up to 10.8, and that is bigger than this third side. So this would make a triangle. All right, that's the end of my geometry review for the day. Um, I'm going to skip this one because we've been doing this time. You're just going to set up to find this over here. I can do it in the notes, and then you can do it. Go back and check it. I want to get through these last two quickly. All right. This is way more complicated than it looks like it has to be. This is the lamp post we're trying to find the height of. Okay. It is tilted toward the sun at a two degree angle from the vertical. So this was a 90 degree and it tilted two more. So it's now a 92 degree angle. This is labeled as a 45. This is 25 feet. Um, we're going to have to find this angle up here. So if we do 180 minus 92 minus 45, we get 43. So we have the sine of 43 is across from a 25. In the same way, the sine of a 45 is across from x. Now, 45 and 43 are pretty close together, so I'm thinking it's going to be close to 25. So 25 times the sine of 45 divided by the sine of 43, we got 25.9. So the lamp post, length of the lamp post is 25.9 feet. All right, last one on this part of the video. And this is a very important concept that's going to show up over and over when we do application problems. Students see this and they want to split the 500, 250, and 250. Okay, a blimp hovers over a soccer stadium. Players 500 feet apart at opposite ends of the stadium look up an angle of elevation of 63 and on this has to look up 72. So how high is the blimp? You cannot split this 500 into 250 and 250. What you have to do is treat this as one big triangle, because it is, and you have to find this angle, all of it, okay? And it, there's other ways you could do a little z thing here and say this is 63 so this is 90 minus 63 but it, it doesn't matter we're just going to treat it as a giant triangle here for a minute so 180 minus 72 and 63 leaves 45. now it doesn't matter which of these sides you find i'm going to just do this one so you're going to say the sine of 45 degrees is across from 500 in the same way the sine of 72 degrees is across from x. That's not helping us find the height, but it's going to. So we type 500 times the sine of 72, and then we divide by the sine of 45, and we get that this distance over here is 672.49 or 672.5. Now what we do is, wow, we can finally find that little height that's going straight up and down inside there. If this is 672.5 and this is a 63 degree angle, the law of sines would actually work, okay? You could set the sine of 90 is across from 672.5 in the same way the sine of 63 is across from H. I like to just go back and use my SOHCAHTOA. This is a right triangle here, so I can just say the sine of 63 equals opposite over hypotenuse. And then if I cross multiply 672.5 times the sine of 63 is 599.2. And that's how high the blimp is. Okay, there's a second part to the video today, but we're going to stop this one right at 30 minutes.